Uh. Yep, big fish. Big fish on. Uh. No, 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 no. Okay, still on. Good, good, good. Uh. What's up, guys? We're out at Buffalo Bayou today. Very special spot loaded with great, great fish. And what I want to show you is how I use light tackle setup with just the smallest hooks and the smallest baits, work my way up the food chain to catch an absolute monster. First things first, I like to have a light setup, a micro light setup. So this is the Bass Pro Shops Micro Light Elite Rod and Reel. Uh, these are made to go together, but I bought them separately. You can get a good rod and reel for about $100. A okay, very thin six pound line. There's two ways I like to do this. I like to use jig heads, so what I'll do is I'll tie on the jig head. So here's our jig head. Just run the, the line through the eye of the hook. So you run the line through the eye of the hook and bring it back, you make a loop. Here we go, we make a loop. And then I'm just gonna run this line through the loop four or five times. No more than that. See it slides down and cinches up on itself. Slide it back to the jig head. There you go, cut the tag ends off and that's what you're left with. This is my favorite bluegill bait. The red worms, you can get the big red worms or the average size red worms, either way. They are Cracker Jack bluegill baits. These ones have just about died. There we go, trying to get some of the soil off of it. Now with a jig head, there's two ways I like to do this. One way is I'll just hook it through and let both ends dangle free beneath the point of the hook, just like that. And the other way is I like to slide it up over the jig head, just like a soft plastic, get it over the little ridge so it stays in place and just leave the smallest amount dangling beneath the point of the hook. That'll work every time, but it's not my favorite. This is what I like to use for drop shotting for small fish like bluegill. Aberdeen hooks by Gamakatsu. They'll do the same job as any other Aberdeen hook, I just think they do it a lot better. Incredibly sharp. See, warning. Extremely sharp hooks, that's not an exaggeration. So what you're going to do, guys, is you're going to run the line. Through the eye of the hook, so that the point, when hanging down, there we go, is facing back towards the rod tip. So take your tag end, run it back through the same direction. There we go, so now you can see I have a loop on one side and the hook tip is pointing back towards the rod tip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie an overhand knot with this loop and I'm going to go through twice. So once, twice, and then I'm going to bring the tag end down. You can see I've got a, an overhand knot with two twists and a tag end right here. That's a loop. The hook is going to go through the tag end. I'm going to pull it down. I want to make sure I get that tag end loop around the eye of the hook. Sometimes it'll bury itself in the, uh, the gap in the hook if you're not using welded hooks. So make sure everything's on the other side. Cinch it down and you end up with a polymer knot. Now don't cut the tag end off. You can see here, there you can see our hook facing upward that helps with the strike. My thumb over here is where the rod tip would be so when you pull that that rod back to that strike it's gonna sink that hook point into the fish. The tag end normally we'd cut that off but we're gonna put our weights on that. You can use traditional drop shots but I like to use split shot and here's why. I'll take our, our tag end. I'm just gonna use one because this is this is six pound line and these are uh, relatively heavily split shot. I'm gonna pinch it on. So here's what we got. Our hook and about four inches beneath that I've got our split shot. 
what I like to do, and this is just my preference, guys. This is just the way I like to do it. There's many ways. I'm not claiming this is the best one. I like to take the tag in, and I'm going to tie a blood knot. So same knot we used for that jig head. Not as many turns. I don't care so much if the, the lead breaks off. See it? There you can see that's our blood knot. Here's our, our weight. I'm going to slide it around so that the open end of the weight faces away from the knot. And I'm going to work that knot down. Can you see that? How it's working its way down? Boom. Around the weight. So it cinches just into the back of the weight. There we go, just like that. And the good thing is, guys, you see I still have about two inches of the tag in. If I want to change that little shot out, maybe put a smaller one on or put some more on there to make it heavier, all I got to do is grab the tag end, and it's the reverse. You just work it back the other way. You open up that loop. You can squeeze your little... Uh, the flaps on the shot on the back, open it back up and take it off. Now again, if you want to go proper drop shotting, the line just slides through a little opening and tightens on itself. It's very quick. But if you don't happen to have that, this is a really good second, second choice. And we have same options here. I can hook the worm through twice and let pieces of it dangle like that. Or I can do the entire worm on the hook shank. And this is typically what I prefer. No matter where that fish bites that worm, most of that hook is gonna be in his mouth. All right, guys, let's go find us a spot where we can catch a bluegill for a long year. Don't fall. Typically these fish are going to be hiding in rocks or around structure. The tide is coming in, but I know that there's a good stump right there under the water. Let's toss this out. And when you're doing this, guys, here's what I recommend. Get the roller guide up by the rod. Loop the line with your finger. Just like that. It's called touch ledgering. And when that fish taps on that line, you can feel it really, really quick. Set that hook, catch the fish. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Look at that, guys. There you go. There's a catfish bait. I'll show you what I'm using. I've got 80 pound, this is 80 pound suffix braid with a, a two ounce lead. That, that yellow is just a stopper knot. Keep that lead in place. 180 pound saltwater swivel, 90 to 100 pound wire. I can't remember the exact weight. This is coated wire. And then uh, down at the end, I've just got on this uh, 4X octopus hook. Very strong, it's like a size seven. All right, let's see here. It's a lot of space to cast out into and there's a lot of hidden snags. I know there's a really bad rocky snag over here this fence continues a little bit further out, and then there's two concrete uh, walls under the water that kind of guide the flow of that, that drain when the water's not so high. So I gotta keep that in mind. I think I'm gonna aim right there. There we go. That's pretty good. That's right about the end of those concrete walls. Still sinking. There you go, on the bottom. open spool. I've got the line coming down here. This little branch, it's just going around the edge of this little branch which is held down by a piece of clay and then back out into the water. The idea is I don't have a live liner on this particular reel but at the moment it's the best reel I have for this type of fishing. So if that fish picks up that bait and moves off with it, it's gonna pull that little stick it's not going to make any noise. I'm going to have to pay real close attention to it, but I have done an enormous amount of fishing 
exactly like this. Um, I've caught all kinds of fish for years and years and years, either before I had bait runner reels or in between bait runner reels or when they were broken or out of commission. This works. Okay guys, big take, big take. Just trying to get another line set and start running. Are you still there? Yes, he's still there. I'm gonna give this one a few more seconds. Okay, here we go. Ah. Yep, big fish, big fish on. Okay, still on. Good, good, good. Uh, whew. He's big, guys. He's a good one. Uh. Uh. Still on. Still on. Okay, this is this is where I gotta be careful. It's where I lost the last one. Here he is. Ugh. Yeah, he's like, oh goodness. This is a good sized fish. I haven't seen it yet. Holy cow. I think it's a gar, but I'm not sure. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my god guys, it is a massive catfish. That's a, that's a PB. <gasps> oh my God, oh my God. Oh, that's a huge fish, guys. Oh, I have no clue how much that's gonna weigh, but he is the biggest catfish I've ever seen. Look at that, guys. Holy smokes. Holy smokes, that is a monster. I gotta get down there to him. Once I get this on his lips, he's ours. He's, he's hooked pretty good, but he's not ours yet. Whew. Okay, he's hooked through his, the interior of his mouth, which is terrifying because that hook could pull. You guys are seeing this. Huh. Gotcha, gotcha. Woo, that's a big old fish. Oh my God. Guys, this is by far the best catfish. Oh, there we go, he's hooks out. Now I gotta be careful with him. So I can't afford to not show you this thing right here. Massive blue, massive blue catfish. Now I'm shaking. Wow, wow, what a fish. What a monster fish. Oh, he's huge, guys. He's gotta weigh at least 30 pounds. Look at that. Holy smokes. Ah, oh, he's so heavy. This is a huge fish. Big, huge blue cat. This is exactly what I wanted to catch today. Wow. This is the biggest fish I've Biggest catfish I've caught ever. It's a PB, I don't know exactly how long it is. I, I don't wanna measure it. He's been out long enough. Let's go ahead and get this monster back. Let's get this guy back in the water. Guys, that's a huge fish. To give you all a reference, my span, pinky to thumb, is nine inches. Actually, it's nine and a quarter. And this fish's head is about nine inches wide. Wow. There he goes. <laughs> Woo! Woo, what a catch. Get a small setup and a big setup that can meet each other in the middle and go both directions. So light tackle, use some worms, use drop shots and jig heads, catch yourself some bluegill, 
put them on that big setup and launch them out into deep, deep water, catch yourself a monster. Again, guys, remember to like the video, subscribe. When you subscribe, hit that bell, get all the notifications right away. More is coming. Stay tuned, and until it's here, I will see you guys later.